All right, so here we have our soldering kit. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this soldering iron. This is a pretty useful tool if you guys haven't seen it before. You basically charge it and it sucks the solder out just in case you make a mistake. But we'll put that aside for now and we'll go ahead and open the kit. So we'll go ahead and open this kit up. So here's your PCB and this is where you're gonna solder all your components on. Notice that one side is blue. The blue side is where you're going to put your components on, and the leads, or the little metal legs of the components, are going to go through this side out to the other side. Now, the metal legs of the components are the ones you're going to solder. Melt metal, basically, to these little uh, metal openings you see here. Uh, so we'll put this down for now. All right, so when your irons are ready, you can go ahead and turn this thing around, and there's some practice areas here. When you solder, you want to melt the metal right against the edge here, and kind of approach with the solder from the opposite direction that you're approaching the iron with, so you can get a nice teardrop. So, I bring this close. You can see that from the side, it's kind of like a little teardrop form, and you want to take up the whole pad. Before starting the kit and after you get a decent amount of practice on this little soldering area on the back, I recommend putting all the components in before you solder anything and just kind of placing them inside and making sure that you have no errors with polarities. Alright, now in your kit you're going to have an extra two resistors and they're going to be labeled R4 and R6A. You don't have to worry about putting those in, those just change the frequency. So we'll leave those aside for now. Let's start taking out these capacitors. Now these little orange capacitors are little ceramic capacitors which means that they require no polarity, which means the way you put it in doesn't really matter. So we'll go ahead and put C1, or sorry, C4 and C5 in. All right. Now these things are called polarized capacitors. These you got to be careful with. So if you look at your board, there's some things labeled C1, C2 plus, and minus. Now the negative side, you have to match with the negative side of this capacitor here. So the negative side will be marked with a little negative gray uh, kind of like dash on the side of the capacitor. It also has a shorter leg when you look at it. The negative side has a shorter leg and the gray dash. So you're going to put the negative dash according to the negative one here. You're going to match kind of, just match to the picture. And you're going to put it through, and the same with the other one. So now we have all of our components in, minus the ICs, LEDs, and transistors. So we'll go ahead and put those in. You look at this board, it's kind of like a half circle looking thing. The transistor also has a similar shape. You just uh, extend the middle leg back, and you just kind of make it fit in there. All right, now the LEDs. So if you look really closely at the pictures here, LEDs also have a similar thing where it's like a circle and then it cuts off. There's like a little edge on the circle. So when you look at your LED, it also has a pretty similar thing uh, going on. You see there's like a little, kind of like a little straight edge. You want to make sure that the straight edge matches the picture's straight edge. And the last things to put in are the potentiometer, which is going to adjust the volume, and your IC, which is on this little pink thing. The IC has a little notch on it. You want to make sure that the notch matches the picture. Make sure that your ICs and all of your components are oriented correctly, and once you've made sure, you can go ahead and start soldering. Let's just move this potentiometer for now because it's kind of flimsy. It's moving around. And let's flip this thing upside down. So right now you have a lot of kind of dangling wires or dangling leads. So as you solder, you kind of want to cut them just to make sure that you don't solder the leads to like another via or another pad, which are these little metal things. Because then you'd have problems in the circuits, short circuits and all that stuff. So you definitely want to come in from the other side of where your soldering iron is coming from. And you want to make a nice little teardrop. So 
We'll just keep soldering the rest of this thing. Alright, so that about does it for all the components. Now we can start clipping the edges here before we put the potentiometer in. And let's turn this thing upside down, start soldering that. Look at this thing, we're still missing a few things. We're missing the speaker, we're missing the battery, and we're missing two things called jumpers, right? Um, jumpers are basically pieces of wire, and the purpose of them is to make a connection between two vias. It's kind of like drawing another one of these little green traces, but instead you're doing it with a wire. This is good for debugging. So we'll go ahead and strip a couple wires. So here's your wire. You can strip it using this little wire stripper thing. At the very corner of it, there's like a little circular opening. You kind of see it this close. You're just going to go over using this thing. You're just going to squeeze and pull out. And you've jumped one connection, you're going to do the same thing for the other side. All you have left is the battery snap and the speaker. On this thing you'll see that there's a positive and a negative on the battery. Black is negative and red is positive. And the speaker. Alright, so the speaker is going to require you to cut some more wire. Alright, you got a positive right here and a negative right next to it. Solid connections to the speaker. We can drop this off. And now we got it connected to the board. Alright, so we have our positive, negative, so this lead has to go to ground. So we're going to go to the other side. We're going to make sure that lead that we chose goes to ground, which is this connection right here. So we're going to go ahead, take this battery snap, take a battery, 9 volt battery, right? You're going to connect the big side to the little side and the little side to the big side. You should see that both LEDs toggle back and forth and the siren goes back and forth between two tones. So if you increase the volume or decrease the volume, it should go away. Put the volume up. Volume really shows it. Uh, volume changes with the potentiometer, so. And that's the final project.